Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my TikTok Live. I'm Artful Roger. Glad you're here to join. Today is Tuesday, the 19th of March. A beautiful, very, very early spring day here in Atlanta, Georgia. Like I said, I'm Artful Roger. This is a TikTok Live, so right now you're seeing this in real time. You may also be seeing me on YouTube under the same name, Artful Roger, that's Roger with a D, where I'm archiving these live sessions. In these sessions, we are upcycling a clock case. We're not harming any clocks. No clocks are damaged. No clocks are ruined. No clocks are destroyed. These are simply empty cases that have no purpose, and we're taking them and turning them into small worlds or rooms or you name it. All kinds of things are happening here with clock cases, but we welcome you. And when I say we, I'm talking about myself, Arthur Roger, and the crew. So let's see who's joined. Tim the Doughboy, welcome. Mary Therese, I'm glad you're here. Awesome. Tim, star of the show, of course. We're sharing the stage, Tim. So yeah, Catherine, welcome. I'm glad you're here as well. Jackie, welcome. Everybody's getting in here. Josh, hey, welcome. Like the little, the little wave there. I've changed things up just a little bit here. Those of you who are in these lives on a regular basis recognize that things are a little bit different. I'm going to step back just a tie, tiny bit so you can see. I've added in a few clock cases that have been done in the past, as well as my 30-year-old traffic light that um, was part of Hurricane Hugo when it hit Charleston way back in 1989. Uh, the destroyed traffic lights were purchased and refurbed, and that is one of the refurb traffic lights from Charleston, South Carolina, circa 1980s. So it's here. Yeah, Garrett. Yeah, we do need a live with Tim and Roger. And we're not too far apart because Tim's in Alabama, I'm in Georgia. So, you know, we're within driving distance. So it's certainly doable for sure. Hey, welcome. Welcome from Atlanta to Dallas. Hopefully you guys are having some spring weather in Dallas. And hopefully not. I don't think you had one of those ugly winters that you've had in the past where things froze to... It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Yeah, thank you, Mary Therese. Happy spring and happy spring to everyone here because it is really a wonderful time. And before we jump into this clock case thing, I wanted to tell you, because it is gardening season and followers of mine here on TikTok understand that, that I'm about three things. One is this art that we're working on here. Two is gardening and three is Christmas. I just purged Christmas out of this set just this afternoon. So we have a whole new, brand new start uh, to get going. But let me show you something I've got here. I'm getting ready to plant some seeds, but I wanted to show you what I'm doing. If you have deer nibbling things in your garden, I recommend you plant marigolds. These will also perhaps help keep away rabbits and things like that, because if you've ever try to do cut flowers with marigolds, you understand that they're very distinctive when it comes to their uh, fragrance. Some would call it an odor. Uh, yes, so they possibly can help deter deer. I am planting these out. These are dwarf. I'm going to put these out further out into one of my raised beds, which is out a little bit further, hopefully to stop the deer before they come along. Um, some sm very small zinnias. This is another plant. you probably heard of the Morning Glory. This is a beautiful flowering vine that, that starts flowering in October. But I would caution you, this is, I think, in the sweet potato family. Deer, if you have deer in your yard or come into your property and you plant these, they will clean these up. And usually after the vine is really ready to bloom late in the summer, when you really are anticipating this gorgeous what they call heavenly blue, the deer will completely devour the vine. So just some fun stuff. If you are into gardening, it's a great time to be buying seeds. I'm noticing that what's happening is a lot of people used to be, no one was into, into gardening that much. Not It was kind of a nerdly thing to do, especially when I was in my 30s back in the 90s. No one gardened, and I was considered to be, they called me Farmer Raj because no one did this. But now everyone seems to be into it. So seeds really seem to sell out. So if you're in a big box retailer or somewhere like that, it clean out. So if you're into seeds, get in there now and get your seeds. Lori, welcome. I'm glad you guys are communicating. It's hard for me to look at this and look at the, the comments as well and see who's here. We got a few people. Tonight, guys, we're going to be opening the box that Tim sent. All the dress material has been removed. So we don't need to worry about anybody knowing my street address 
which is a good thing, or Tim's for that matter. But we're going to be opening this in just a moment. Yeah, you're talking about if you say it's oh, it's finished. We are close to finishing on the um, on this clock case. This is the project that we've been working on, and I'll show you inside. If you guys are new here and haven't been a part of this before, this is what we've been working on. This is our girl. This is Jolene in her little Great Gatsby themed Christmas moment that she's having in there. Everything is glued in, so I'm going to tip it down so you can see inside the Christmas gifts, the lattice window, the chandelier. Kind of a fantasy piece is what we've got going on here. Open that up a little bit more so you can see in there. But this is what we've all been working on for quite some time. Hey, RSA. Yes, it is a better way to buy seeds in bulk. You're absolutely right. I appreciate you saying that. I think a lot of people are just getting started. I have a small space, so I don't need a lot of seeds. You know, I have in the past bought seeds in bulk, but I didn't need them that much this year. But yeah, what we're doing here is taking these clock cases, this one in particular, and we're converting them. The This is a clock case converted. Um, this was an, inspired by The Last of Us, if you've seen that on, I think it was on, was it Netflix? The Last of Us, kind of one of those apocalyptic end of the world uh, type shows. I'll show you inside of this later. This is some 1950 dan dancers, 1950s dancers are inside here, little music box dancers. And then this is one of my steampunk creations from quite some time ago. But all of these are clock cases that I found that were already gutted, for lack of a better way to say it. There were no clock parts inside, so I just used these boxes actually to create something. Yes, I love Morning Glories too, and the blue ones are awesome, and they always bloom right at frost in October is when they're at their absolute height and beauty. Um, but like I said earlier, if you plant them and you have deer, you won't make it. These that I bought are going to be in a container, and they're growing on the deck. Actually, I'm going to grow them onto the railing of the deck, so the deer don't come up there. They don't tend to sit around with me and, you know, have a drink and, and kick back and, and eat the Morning Glories. So it doesn't happen that way. So yeah, Melissa, it looks like you made it. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, and Donna, I appreciate the comment. I want to show you guys a couple of things before we move forward. So we're working on Jolene here, and we've, I've found some things this weekend, but I want to show you what's coming after Jolene. This is what's happening. And what's wonderful about this is that I'm, if you guys remember, I showed you this case a long time ago. We looked at it, and it was an empty shell. And it's all the way to this point. This is the next one. And guys, this is what they look like when I find them. You can see that this is a, it's what some people call a hot mess. It's been taped together over the years. It smells like it's 100 years old. It really has that kind of pungent, I don't know what you call, kind of a wood smell about it. But yeah, this one is our next project. You can see that it used to have, you know, probably fake columns or something here that are, have been removed. Hardware from the side removed, so just a lot of work, but we're going to completely redo this one. Take a note, get it in your brains. This will be archived on YouTube, so we can go back and look at it and say, oh, that's what that one looked like, because it's going to have a similar look and feel to this one. This is where we're headed. We're going to create something out of this. I don't know who it's going to be as far as our girls. Because we've got our two girls here, we've got to figure out what to do with Judine and Chevrine, as they've been named. But I have an idea for her. And I know we've been giving her a hard time calling her baby Jane and all kinds of things. But she is going to be... I've got another clock case coming, actually. My sister was in Pennsylvania over the uh, weekend with her uh, one of her sons and her husband. And they texted me a picture of a empty clock case it's very long has a very large interior with a small window in the front enough for me to create for the first time an interior door and so she is going to be i'm thinking behind an interior door kind of peeking out so you can look at an interior door she's peeking around the corner into another room so that's i think that's how we're going to use judine we're going to see her but she's going to be we're going to take advantage of that pose you see how she looks like she's leaning to one side that's what we're going to use to create a doorway kind of effect so she's looking through it, you know, from the side. So that's what we're going to do. Don't know what Chevrine's going to do yet. Who knows? She might be. Perhaps, perhaps this is her home sweet home. We'll see. 
This green, by the way, is going bye-bye. That will not be there. The, all of this marbleized green, it's got some really bad scarring on it, so I'm gonna have to paint over all that. So it's, it's gonna not, not gonna stick around. But anyhow, these are our girls. And this is our next project. So I hope it's in your mind. You see what it looks like because this is gonna be super fun. It's probably gonna be the last of the clock cases before I have to transition into the next uh, iteration of these lives, whatever that may be. I told you we're gonna do basic lamp repair. We're gonna do that, how to rewire a lamp. So that's coming. That'll probably come somewhere in the middle of the next clock case project that we work on. So let's go ahead since I, by now, hey, Chipper, Chipper has arrived. Sarah is here. I see that you, you're here as well. So glad. Glad that, um, and if I haven't called you out, guys, I apologize because I probably just missed when you joined the live, so my apologies. But let's go ahead and open what Tim sent to us because we want to go ahead and put the finishing touches on Juline's clock case so we can make her world really nice. So, but, and we'll open Tim, and then we're going to talk about a couple of things I found over the weekend. So, Again, I have removed, I removed all of the, um, all of the address information. Chipper, Chipper, sweet Chipper. Girlfriend, I fixed, I fixed your project right after the last time we had a live. I did the best I could with the little chandelier in the top. I didn't know exactly how you had it, but look. The bunny has all of its hearing back. It can it has both of its ears again, so it is in great shape. Everything's back in there. Um, it revealed Little Women and Alice's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Those were the books in there. So this was a gift. If you're new here and you weren't in the last live, this was a gift that Chipper sent to me. Ms. Doodle, Ms. Chipper Doodle, sent this to me. She made this herself. I simply adore it. I love it. I love it. And it's even illuminated. And she did such a wonderful job, but it had a little shipping damage and the bunny lost an ear and the chandelier fell apart. So there was, there was a lot of wreckage here, but we did fix it. So I'm so glad. Yes. I love it. I really do chipper. It's super sweet, super, super sweet. So I always think of you when I see it. So thank you. And Chipper, I've already, this has been repaired. It does illuminate. So I've already, I've already fixed it. I've already revealed the light bulb. I've already gotten into it, but I am going to be converting this little incandescent 1950s dollhouse lamp into LED so that I can use it in my next project. So once again, Chipper, thank you. Thank you. You're a sweetheart. You really are. Okay. Meanwhile, Tim's like, what about me? All right, Tim, calm down. It's all about you now. First, the note. I have all my notes back here, by the way. No glitter bombs this time, according to Tim. Tim, love you. Thank you so much. And Tim, I will read this when I am not on here. Tim, should I read this out loud? Can I, I have not read it, Tim. Should I, can I read it out loud? Yes or no? This is to Tim. Tim? Yes, I can. Okay, here we go. Greetings, Roger. Enclosed are two wreaths. My OCD kicked in and I made a second option. And the two bulldog figurines. Put them up to a vote and let the crew decide which, if any, works best. For most of our lives, we interact with people without ever knowing the impact we have. I just want you to know how glad I am I stumbled into TikTok in your fabulous Christmas tree video. You have truly inspired me to get back in touch. I'm holding it together, Tim. You have truly inspired me to get back in touch with my creative side at a time when I needed to do just that. So thank you and keep inspiring people with your videos and lives. Cheers, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. And thank you, crew. It's awesome. You have, I've told you before, what happens for you is happening for me. This is a two-way two -way street. It absolutely is amazing. It has been amazing, and I do appreciate you guys. And you guys, everybody thanks Tim. <laughs> All right, look, Tim and his amazing paper. 
Oh, wow. So here's our blue bulldog. She's a big girl. Or boy. Garrett, thank you for saying that. Yes, guys, here is the bulldog. This is the bulldog I really hope to use. So we're going to talk about this bulldog in just a moment. I'm going to put the bulldog here. I think you guys can still see the bulldog. There we go. This is like Christmas. Oh, wow. Another bulldog. Look at this one. Awesome. Okay. So right here, two bulldogs. I told you guys my sister watches these things on YouTube. She doesn't, she doesn't have TikTok. But um, she's going to love looking at these bulldogs. I'm trying, when I do these, I try to think of her because how she sees these things. Okay, here are the wreaths. I love these bugle beads so much. I just really do. So I don't know which one to show first. I'm going to show them both at the same time. Here are the two reads. So we're going to call this one, this one can be pearl wreath, and this will be just the plain one. So pearls are plain is how we'll, we'll, we'll call these. Who's leaning towards what? Pearls are plain. Anyone? Pearls are plain. I'll tell you guys, yeah, they both are. Pearls, every, okay, so I got pearls, I got a plane, I got a plane. But da ba 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 we got a pearls, we got a plane. Can we get another plane? One more plane, we got a pearls, we got a pearls. Can we get it? We got a plane, we got a plane. Can we get another pearls? Pearls, plane, plane, pearls, pearls, pearls. We got another pearls. Plane, plane, pearls, plane, we got another plane. Planes ahead, planes ahead. Plane for the win, plane, plane. Did we get another pearls? We got a plane. Plane is way ahead. Plane. Pearls. Okay, pearls is coming up from the rear. Plane. Plane is still plane. Oh, plane has moved into the lead. Guys, it's plane. I love the plane one too. That's the one that I went with. This is the one that I was really liking. As soon as I saw it, my eye went straight to it. Love this one, but like I said, it will absolutely find a home in another clock project, but I think... For our girl, Jolene, I think this is it. I think this is it. So we're going to go with that one. I'm going to set it to the side just for a second. Tim, did I miss anything in there? I don't think I did. It's well packaged. So we got two dogs and two wreaths. And we're good, right? I like the plan if it's finished. It might need a ribbon. Okay. Okay, so that's it. All right, awesome. Set this to the side. Perfect. Okay. So we've got our dogs. Let me move this back into view so we can see our little doggies. And there they are. Okay. And I can't unfortunately get Jolene out of the case because she's glued in. So we're going to let Chevrine be our stand-in. She's our stand-in right now for her screen test. So we can kind of get an idea of scale with the dogs. Okay. There's that. All right. And while I was out this weekend, I found another dog. So I want to show you guys that. I have to wait for a second. Somebody's trying to join my live, and I have to wait for the notification to retract, and it just did. Okay, so you see Tim's dogs, and this is the little itty-bitty dog puppy that I found over the weekend. I don't know if that's focusing, but look at the little face. This is cute little puppy. So I found a brown puppy. So the brown puppy, I'm going to put the brown puppy in here. All right, so we got a brown tiny puppy. We got two big dogs. And we also have, we also have our Sculpty. So these are our choices. And watch me dump Chevrine down and break her head off. All right, so there you go, guys. Those are our choices. The Scotty's kind of hard to see because it's black on black. Chipper's loving the Scotty. Okay. Yeah, the Scotty's been my choice all along. So, anybody loving either one of the Bulldogs? Scotty's got two votes. Scotty's got three votes. Puppy's got a vote. Scotty's got an... Oh, Scotty, Scotty's leading. Holy moly. The Scotty is killing it. The, the Scotty's killing it. Okay. Oh, my God. Tim even likes the Scotty. Biscotti. 
Oh my gosh, it makes me want some biscotti. All right, okay, I got one puppy. All right, no bulldogs. The bulldogs are not getting it. So no votes for the bulldogs. That's fine. Just because they're not working here, it's okay. But we're gonna put them into the case now and see what they look like. So I'm gonna remove the bulldogs. But I'm probably gonna put them in there anyway. I'm gonna keep the puppy and the Scotty. Take Chevrine off. I'm gonna open this thing up. There's the window. All right, let me get this door open because I'm gonna set the dog in there. So you guys can see in there pretty good. Okay. I'm gonna set the puppy in first because we've seen the Scotty already. Hopefully this comes through. There's the puppy. The puppy, the puppy, the puppy. Hey, Vivi. Puppy. How are you guys liking the puppy? The puppy scale is super cute. It's got a really cute little expression and it's looking right at the window. So it's like looking at who's ever we are. It's looking at us as we look in. Yeah, Vivi, I got you. So Chipper's not liking the puppy. Chipper, you never say nah to a puppy, ever. Hot Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah. It's because it's burning up in here. That's why it's hot. Okay, so I'm putting the Scotty back in. All right, here we go. I like the scale of the puppy too. There's the Scotty. All right. Scotty, Scotty, Scotty. Black Scotty, black case. Puppy, Scotty, puppy, Scotty. Another, okay, oh goodness, you guys are tying the score. I got a Scotty, puppy, Scotty. <laughs> All right, Scotty's winning this. You know what? If it were up to me, if it were, if it were me alone doing this, I would... I would, um, I'm sorry, there's flagged comments in my life, so there just throws me off. The, uh, if it were me doing this, I would put a puppy in here for sure. I would put the puppy in, that's the one I would go with, although I love the Scotty, but I would put the puppy in, but this is a group effort, and we're gonna use the Scotty, but before we completely go in that direction, we have to try the blue bulldog at least, see what he does. He's too big. Yeah, he's a monster. I mean, I think he just gets lost in there. He's enormous. Agree? The bulldog is huge. I think it's just he's so big. Yeah. Yeah, don't put up a don't put up a vote thingy. Guys, don't do that because I can't see any of the comments while that vote's up. It completely blocks me for my ability to see what you guys are saying. The, it's funny because of the scale. That looks like a horse in there with her, but it is a massive dog. I mean, that is a really big dog in there, but not a lot of room in there for something so big. Yeah, so these guys, another project probably. We'll hang on to these. They're, they're monsters. So the Scotty wins, right? Scotty wins. You guys are good. Scotty for the win. Scotty for the win. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. This poor puppy, it's sad, and it had such a great expression. It was so cute. Wait, did it really? All right, I'm gonna forego seeing comments. If one of you folks that are doing my, mod my, my moderating, if you moderating, if you will put up a, a, a puppy, let's put up a, a voting thingy for a puppy or a Scotty, if you guys want to do that. And we'll wait, I'll wait it out and see what happens. I see more puppies. Yeah, either is fine, but I want this to be, my vote is on the puppy too. It definitely is. So yeah, who can set up a vote thing on here for me? Mary Therese, can you do that? Or Lori? Yeah, I'm seeing puppy like crazy now. Yeah, Democratic, even though I'm in a red state, exactly. Well, you're trying to do it, okay. 
Hopefully I don't have it, yeah. I don't have it turned off. Yeah, it looks like you've got something there. Perfect, so two minutes, and it's not blocking me. All right, cool. From the same three people. <laughs> oh my goodness, so very true. All right, it's, we'll see who wins this. I'm not gonna deal with that yet, but there's one more thing I gotta show you guys that I found this weekend, okay? This, that's going in here, I don't care. It's going in here. Love my convertible, welcome. All right, what I want you to do is take note of her dress. Do you see the flowers in her dress? Yellow and pink, do you see that? Yellow and pink in the dress. I'm gonna hold it up here a little longer. I'm sure you guys can see the dress has yellow and pink in it, has flowers on it. The serendipitous nature of building things like this is things find you. Look at this. Look what color the, the vessel is and look at the flowers. Guys, this in here is absolute. It is a piece of, it is, I think it's doll, I think it's for a dollhouse but it is made out of some sort of a material. Tim probably knows what it is, but it feels like plaster of Paris or something like that, and it's really amazing. This was in a little cabinet in an antique store. I couldn't believe it. As soon as I saw the colors, the lady was asking me a million questions when I asked her to get it out of the cabinet. You know, like, what are you doing with that? And, you know, you collect these kinds of things, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to, I don't talk about what I do, this kind of stuff, because it gets too many conversations started. But I want you to see let me do this. I'm gonna put the puppy in, and I'm not gluing it in yet. So we got four seconds left on this on the uh, on the uh, voting. So I guess we'll find out what happened there. And I'm gonna hold this thing up here so you can see it. But you can see the flowers kind of behind her. They're not overpowering, but the yellow and the pink just behind her. And the puppy in there, it all just really works. It's really beautiful. I mean, it just really came together. The flowers are perfect. And I put them on a small stand to bring it up higher. You really have to look to see it, meaning that it's not in your face. And that's the, uh, that is the nice thing about, hey Earl, that's the nice thing about this kind of thing. You wanna have mystery in there and you wanna be able to peek around and look in there and try to look for details. So I think the puppy is a super, size scale the scale is perfect because he's little the flowers are behind her they don't interfere with the chandelier but they really provide an amazing color here we go all right puppy or scotty all right guys i'm sure everybody sees that i can't see your comments while you're voting so see what happens i'm gonna have to put my vote on there i guess so i'm behind the phone here and let's see if i can uh deal with this all right, maybe that helped. All right, I'm back. Twas a tie. Was it really? It really was a tie? Yeah, I don't, guys, I, I totally rely on my, uh, my experts here, the people that are, yes. Yeah. So Mary Therese, did, it was a tie. So you saw the tie. It's only eight votes, yeah. Nobody's interested in voting. Look, it's going to be the puppy. We're done. We're done. My glue gun is hot and smoking. It's ready to work. So let's go ahead and put some touches on this. It's gonna be the puppy. The puppy's super cute. We're doing that. I hope everybody's okay with that. Trust me when I tell you, the puppy is adorable. It has the cutest little face on it. It is so cute. Yes, yes, I did. I made an executive decision. I'm glad you guys like these. They're just beautiful. So I'm gonna put a little glue on the bottom of the puppy. Whoops. And again, the great thing about the floor that we used on this particular case is that even if we don't like the puppy or, you know, whatever, we can always change it later. Or I can, or whatever. All right, there's the puppy. I love that the puppy's head is upward and he's looking at the opening. Okay, so he's glued in. All right, the next thing we're gluing in are the flowers. They're going in the corner. Guys, these are the finishing touches on this clock case. And I don't put a lot of glue on these things. All right. There we 
go. All right, that was it. I think those were the actual finishing touches on this and the wreath. I've got to get the wreath, so we're going to do that next. The wreath is going on the window right in here, and it's going to be this one. Very simple. This is going to be a little challenging because I need to make sure we're going to have to put a touch of glue on it and glue it into place and then figure that out. I think this back will be so glad when we're done taking it out and pulling it out. You tapped yourself off the live, you did. Well, Chipper, I appreciate it because you're trying to make sure that there's, there's likes for the live so that it, um, it gets moved up, actually. And I appreciate you guys tapping the screen, by the way. All right, I just did a little tiny touch of glue just to maybe hold it there. I think that's got it. Let's see if that looks all right. I didn't want it to interfere with the chandelier. I may have it too high. Let's see here. Yeah, I think it's too high. I'm gonna have to lower it a little bit, don't you think? Lower it. What do you think about the uh, wreath in general? Is it too much? So you think it looks perfect? Lower it. Yeah, lower it just a little. I think that's what everybody's thinking. Yeah, and, and you think it's too much. I'm gonna lower it just a little bit and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna see if that helps. It feels like it's a little bit in there with the chandelier, so it's making me a little, it's giving me a little bit of stress. Tim, this looks like such intricate work, like it takes a long time to do this. And if we determine the wreath is too much, and that looks a little too low now, <laughs> um, that if it's too much in here, then we will, um, we just won't use it. We'll put it on the outside. I think that's much better. Although I don't think I centered it very well on the window, but I think the height is good. What do you guys think? It needs to be below the chandelier for sure. And it could be a little too much, yeah. Still thinking it's too much? What I think is great about it is it is a fantasy piece. And I don't think, I think the wreath is pushing, it's pushing a little bit in the direction of being maybe a little too much, but it's okay because you wanna have things to look at in there. You wanna look in there and see stuff and you wanna be wowed by different things. I'm adding a little more glue. I'm working to center it a little better. Okay. Yeah, I think this is this is better. I love how glue does all those spider webs. So it looks really low here, but it really doesn't look that way when it's in here. Well, Tim, I've glued it in now. I'm sold on it being on the inside. I just love the way it looks in there. I it does I think it's hard to see it on here but it really adds some extra sparkle and there's all these layers and pieces in there and things to look at. And that's what makes it so, look how cute the puppy is. I think it really works. I have no problem with it. It doesn't to take away from the window. You still see it. Yes, exactly. It's supposed to be a little too much. I mean, there are entirely too many gifts in there and the toppers for gosh sakes, they're huge. So yeah, I think it looks fantastic. I really like it. I really love it. I think it's perfect. I think it's beautiful. Closing the little window here. No, no, no. You're talking about the flowers in the back? 
I don't agree. I think you need to see it in person to understand it. It's really about the flowers being back there. I understand that it may be that the blue and white is lost, but you can see it because when you're here, and I'm gonna turn it around and pretend like I'm looking into it, which I'm not pretending, I'm actually looking. But as I'm standing here looking at this, like this, I can see everything. I can see the blue and white vase, I see the flowers, I see the wreath, everything is here. It's very difficult to hold this up to an iPhone. But I promise you, <coughs> that I'll do a video, and what I'll do with the video is I will stick the phone inside. Paul, you're here. Paul at 1983 has made the live. Thank you, Paul, for being here. And you've probably been here a while and I didn't notice, but I'm so glad you're here. You made it, you made it. So nothing popped up at work. No clients needed anything tonight, so that's awesome. I'm glad you're here. But yeah, guys, this is really amazing. But I will show you again, I will stick a phone in, I'll put my phone inside and, and kind of do one of those look around things. You'll get to see it. So just come back and check it out. If you're new here, there's 48 people in here. I think this is just the crew. But if there's anybody here who's not familiar, just follow me here on TikTok. You'll see it. And know too that I'm archiving these lives at on YouTube. I'm sorry, TikTok. Follow me on TikTok. I'm also on YouTube. My head is everywhere. Anyway. Guys, Jolene is complete. We have taken her from a crappy clock case that looks like this, dirty old clock case, empty shell like this, and we've turned it into this. So there it is. Beautiful concept that we came up with in these lives. I just, every time I think about it, it's just really amazing that, um, <laughs> yes, Thank you, Mad Housewife. You're my biggest fan, I think. My biggest fan of my um, visage, I should say. Of my uh, aging visage. So, I wanted to, since we're here, I showed you guys the things that Tim sent. We talked about chippers repair. We've got this completed, so we're done. And I'll do a video of this. And so, this will be coming. So, I'm going to set it to the side. I'm still here. I wanted to show you guys... If I haven't already, I think I may have done this in another video, but I wanted to show you inside this one. This one, I had this clock case for a long time. A long time. I mean, for several years, it sat in my studio. And I didn't know what to do with it. It had a complete clock face on it. And I was watching The Last of Us. And it was the last, whatever the end of the season was. And they were, what it looked like they were in Salt Lake City. It's what it looked like to me, where they were. And it was just in ruins and vines and all. And in watching that, I got super inspired. So what I did is I took some cutters and I cut the clock face back because there was no clock guts in here. And I look, made it look burned. And I don't know if that can even come through. But yeah, there's like a, um, if let's open the window back up. Hang on, this is awkward. Let's see if we can do it. But you can see in there, there's another little tiny miniature clock in there that has fire inside of it in the old building inside. I don't. I think it's hard to really see what's in there, but it's like ruins. It's like factory ruins. An old. Um, I can't even get it in there. You can't. You can't really see it. It's hard to see. I'll do another video on this so you guys can see it. But yeah, this is. Your internet is bad too, Susie Colorado. Yeah, this is just a different kind of concept that I did with a clock case, and that's why I'm showing it. It's not a Christmas theme because they don't always have to be Christmassy. And I know you guys have seen this one before. This one is the, um, we'll look at this again for just for the, for the sake of giggles. Because I'm thinking about what am I going to be doing on the next one? Do we want it to be a um, Christmas theme or not? I'm not sure. I need to think about that. I'm not feeling the full inspiration at this point. But these are the little dancers that are in there. You can see them in there with their little chandelier or pendant. Yeah, and their little thing going on in there. But again, this is another concept piece. Another old empty clock case. And this one took me about a year to finish. This one took forever because of the mechanics and everything else that had to be worked out to make it work. But yeah, the mirrors, the little chandelier. There is a music box, but it operates separately from this. So 
you have to turn that on separately. But yeah, this is a, this one, again, I don't know that I could ever make another one of these. I don't think I could. It was so, it was so difficult and challenging to make. Yeah, there's a, there we go. So all of this stuff were things that I found. The music box was in another little cheapo thing I found at Goodwill. And then the little dancers were on eBay and a mirror. Somebody made the little chandelier for me. This is a mesmerizing little thing, yeah. Yeah, a garden theme one would be interesting. It probably would be, and that's something to think about. I appreciate that, yeah. I gotta let my brain mull that over, and I'm sure that um, Tim probably has already mulled over some ideas as well. You know, to answer the question about selling these, we talked about this in the last live. Yes, I've sold, I've sold several, several thousand of my pieces over the years. Um, I started doing these back in 2005 and did it full time for like six years, from 2011 until 2018 or something like that. So. I sold a lot of pieces, but it's been a long time. These pieces I've made since then, and I haven't sold anything in quite some time because of that. So it's hard, I'm not doing it full time anymore. And my my insurance lapsed. You know, I let all my insurance go and everything else, so I'm not operating that way anyhow anymore. You're late, Martha Ann. I'm glad you're here anyway. Yeah, Judine could be the hostess of a garden party in her party dress. She could be. Actually, yes. Well, Chevreen. Chevreen could be, I think, garden party. I've got an idea for Judine. And I, I've got a clock case coming that's very big. And like I said, I want to create an interior door with her looking around the corner out of the interior door. I've never done one that has a, has a sense inside of being two rooms or multiple rooms that you're only looking in one room. There, there are no doors entering into these other cases that I do. So that's what I'm thinking. Judine for Halloween. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I just don't get, I don't get the feels off of Halloween. It just doesn't, it doesn't, I'm not feeling it. The garden party, I'm feeling it. Christmas, I feel it. I was thinking of doing something that was um, just a formal space. I really like the, I love what we did with uh, Juline. I love this one. I love this concept of Juline. Maybe do it without a Christmas tree. Maybe that, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah. Give her a mask. Yeah, she does have the perfect color for a garden party. She does in that green. She really does. I'm loving the elegance of this thing in here. And I'm thinking that I'd like to do something like this with the next one with perhaps with Judine. But maybe it's not Christmas themed. I'm not sure. I've got to really... I've got to let some stuff stew in my head. Right now, I'm going to spend my time working on the outside of that next clock case, getting it cleaned up, getting it painted, and things like that, preparing it before I ever think about what the inside's going to look like. But it's just, it's fun to do these. A workshop, yeah, see, that's a great idea, Lori. That's kind of like what I did with this one here that has these, it has this clock inside again in miniature. So yeah, we could do that. It could be it could be a project being done inside. Absolutely. You're loving my shirt, yeah, yeah. This is um, one of my uh, one of my favorite shirts actually. I've had this thing a long time. Yeah, masquerade ball. Yeah, perhaps. I've got to get my I've got to get my ideas. I got to get I got to get the juices flowing and 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 get my thoughts together. So yeah, there's plenty of things to think about. Glad you're liking that, Paul. Yep. Had that custom created. I was glad they could do it. Yeah, because it looks like neon, but it's um, you know, it's just it's LED. And they did they did a great job. Alice in Wonderland, yeah, that could be interesting. I don't want it to be too much like child's though for children. You know, I want it to be more adult themed. I really like the great Gatsby kind of thing. James! James Bryant, there he is coming through. Always throwing out the gifts. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. James is number one gifter. Yeah. Things come to me and we'll see it. It's gonna be I have my I have my two figures. The dogs are here, the Christmas tree of Tim's. 
the Christmas tree is Tim's Christmas tree. It has to be, I'm going to have to put it in a case and it could be the next case. I'm going to do another Christmas theme because I want to definitely use this. I don't want to have this not used and you know, we've got pearls as well that I can use. So I really think I need to put these to use. I love the pink, the soft pink color. So I think that I'm really going to work on these next just to make sure that they don't end up in a box somewhere unused because they absolutely have to be put into something like this. My, my thoughts about it is if I, if I create something like this, it's pretty much guaranteed it's going to be probably hopefully cared for. And when I'm long gone, hopefully it's still around and it's somewhere and it's, you know, it's something that would be perhaps taken care of because it is a thing. I think if you found this Christmas tree, you know, in a box somewhere, it doesn't, it's, it has no context. And so it needs to be in a world of its own. And that's how I feel about the girls. They need to be in something as well. It creates something for them like Judine, Juline, I'm sorry, was, was by herself. And now look at her, she's in this world and she looks magnificent in there. It's just really beautiful. So I'm loving it. So we'll see, but we'll let the time happen and we'll let the juices flow. My big birthday is happening. I said in one of my uh, videos that it was two weeks. It is about two weeks out. It's April 3rd, actually. That's my birthday. So 4-3, Wednesday 4-3, I shall be 6-0. I was born in 64, way back. Wait a minute. Yes, I'm a birthday boy. Yes, but for a moment. Yes, it's a milestone birthday, I guess, is what you call that. Yeah, 60. It's hard to believe. But yes, I am arriving in my 60s. My 50s were a lightning fast experience. I feel like I just turned 50. I can't believe I'm turning 60 because I'm like, what happened to my 50s? I've heard from my friends who are in their 80s that the 60s and the 70s are lightning fast, even faster. They likened it to... Oh, 61, congratulations. They likened it to toilet paper at the end of the roll. As you get closer to the core, the faster it comes off the roll. It goes slower in the beginning because there's a lot more squares, but as you get down to fewer squares, it goes faster and faster. And that's what they said. 60 is the new 40, yeah. I'll see what I say in 10 years, which I just, you know, wow. And RSA, 66, I know. It's, it's just, it's amazing, yeah. And I'm sure you're like, 66, okay guess this is happening. Oh, Paul, you're coming up on 60 also. So you were, you're a um, 64 baby too, 1964. Yeah, I can't believe us 1964 kids. I still remember us all as little kids that were already 60. You know, it's hard to believe. We had, um, hey, Matt, we had a, um, a, per a friend stop by yesterday and she just turned 35 and it was just talking to her. I just forget that my, my son just turned 35. You know, it's like, I forget that I'm that age. It's like, I feel like I'm also 35, but I'm not. I'm these people's parents. <laughs> I'm seen as a dad. 62. Yeah. So it looks like my group is pretty much my age. You guys were all in the same, kind of in the same age group. This is an older person's kind of hobby, I guess. This is what we like to do. We like to take these old cases and upcycle and turn them into something different. So, yeah, this is what we're doing on here for fun. This is how we spend our Tuesdays and our Thursday nights. 64. So here we go. Six, so 1966 baby. Okay, yeah. I'm married to a 66 baby. And Chicky MGB is 20 years older than all of us, so that means, well, if you're 20 years older than me, you're 80. If you're 20 years older than RSA, then you're, you're 86. If Donna, you'd be 82. <laughs> 51, oh my gosh, a child. Melissa, you're a child. Just a child. So, but you're also an Aries, right? Yeah, there is something freeing about being this age. That is for sure. It has been a mental change, for sure. It's not, I don't care about the same things I cared about, that I cared about when I was younger. Sarah, yeah, you're not quite in your 60s is right. Yes, I don't know if you're quite even in your 40s, my dear. I think you've got a little ways to go. Again, you're one of my children. <laughs> I know, where is Groovy? Groovy is the child. Oh, so you're a Taurus. Okay. So yeah, it must be down the line. So yeah, you're the one right after Aries, of course. 
at 4.30. Yeah, Groovy is the child here for sure, and I don't know where Groovy is. Experience changes you. I think loss changes you. Um, you know, you realize that people people leave in your life and they go away for good. People pass away. It happens. And, you know, I remember when the first time I experienced it, when I was very young, and how I experience it now, it's like I was just thinking about it this morning about high school and realizing how many of my classmates are already gone. And I just was like, wow. And I just, once I'd named a couple, I'd named off another six or so. And I'm like, wow. So I'm happy to be 60 and to be celebrating 60. So I'm grateful for that. I'm not bemoaning it in, by no means. It's just that I'm here and it's like, wow. So it's all good. 68. Okay. Congratulations. 68. Okay. Oh, you joined it last November. Okay. Well, I'm joining you in the club. I'm joining you in your club. Paul, thank you for that. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. It absolutely is. And it has been, this whole experience with TikTok has been an awesome experience for me. It's been an opening experience for my heart. Um, it, it just really has been a changing experience, and I appreciate the relationship that I've actually developed with you guys. You know, we've come a long way since we were having two-hour lives. Um, now our lives are lasting about an hour or less because we're getting through this. But we're going to start on another project, I guess, here pretty soon. So what I'm thinking um, for the next live, on Thursday night, if we do it on Thursday, perhaps that's the night we do basic lamp rewiring. You know, maybe that's the one we do because I'm in between projects and I don't want to jump right into another clock, clock case project immediately. I'm going to have to take some time to get this one ready. And yeah, so I'm going to do the lamp. Yeah, RSA, thank you for that. We're going to go ahead and jump into the lamp repair. And like I told you, if you want to, um, in preparation for that live on Thursday night when we do it, we're going to be talking about basic sockets and just basic lamp structure. I showed you this lamp last time. I'm going to pull this thing out here again so you can know this is just the kind of lamp we're talking about with a, you know, just a simple structure like this. Nothing elaborate, no desk lamps with articulating arms and heads and all that stuff because it's too complicated to try to explain. What I'm going to be doing is talking about this cord, how to properly connect inside this socket, and how, you know, how we can take a lamp apart. And I've got some other lamps that we can disassemble. I mean, I could take this one apart too and do it, but we will be doing that. So if you have a lamp, um, you can have it there with you so you can look at it as a visual for yourself, a visual aid. Um, I would also suggest that you bring something to write down a couple of notes with because I'm going to give you some some words and some stuff like that and some rhyming things and you know word association, ways to remember it. So you'll be able to when you're done to safely wire this because like I told you, I'm a certified lamp smith. I have done, I couldn't even tell you how many repairs I've done over the years rewirings of chandeliers, installations. I've created lighting from a bucket of parts all the way up to, you know, doing repairs. So you'll, you'll be well-versed in the process when we're done. So I think we'll do that on Thursday and we will we'll table the uh, clock case for a little bit and give it a rest because we have been intense on this for a little bit of time. And spring gardening, yeah, perhaps after Easter. Yeah, April will be the time we start. And we talked about me doing lives in the garden. Those are very difficult to do. I've got to figure out how that's going to work. But we can talk about plants and things like that at this at this desk as well. I'll, I'll redress this and we'll, um, we'll do that. So, yeah, there's plenty of ideas for us to keep going. Yeah. Did you write the instructions for the Moravian Light Fixture from Ballard? Um, I rewrote them. That's interesting. Did you... Um, I don't know, how long ago did you buy the Moravian light fixture? If you bought it, I just yeah, just answer the question, I guess. Yeah, when did you buy it? Oh, did you, Jackie? That's awesome. So you put out some bunnies and stuff like that. Oh, you ordered it over the weekend. So have you, so you have the light fixture there with you, Tim? Have you looked at the instructions? The Moravian star had to be rewritten. I have a feeling I know what you're going to ask me. You have not opened it yet. I rewrote those instructions probably in 2019, I think, or 2020. I'm not certain. Anything that says 2019 or sooner on an update 
on the date on the instructions that would be mean they came across my desk they 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 were put through the rinse but you can reach out to me too if you have questions about it if you get those instructions because I've installed many Moravian stars over the years so I can certainly help you with that yeah and hopefully that works out it should be a simple installation for you too it should be easy Good, I'm glad you did. Yes, because the instructions are me. Yeah, they absolutely do. Everything that has an instruction sheet pretty much at, at uh, that company comes across my desk. You know, it goes through Illustrator and I, I write it down. I hate the word T-H-E. So if you ever see the word T-H-E, the, in any instructions from that company, then you will um, know that it didn't. I didn't write it because I don't use that word. <laughs> I avoid it. It's unneeded. So you write a check for installation. Okay, good. So someone else will do it for you. It won't be you doing it. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. You, so you took a little tyke's kid's car and made it into a bunny car. That's super cute. So that stuff is outside. That's awesome. That stuff brings a little joy to people. I think it's good to do that. I don't decorate for Easter. I only have one Easter thing, and that was made here. It was made by Chipper, and this is the only thing I have. It's right here. This cute little thing. So I think... Thank you, Sarah, for stopping in. But yes, Chipper, thanks for sending this. So that is my bit of Easter. Well, guys, that is it for me as well. It is time to say night-night. I know we've only been an hour in here, but we are done with this clock case. And guys, thank you for your help with this. Jolene thanks you. She's in a beautiful world in there. And I will make a video of this later, and I will post it so you guys can see the inside of it. I hope you have a great evening, and I'll see you on Thursday for some lamp repair. Take care, guys.